Who's ready for a brain drain? <laughs> All right, so that is in the title of this video. That's kind of what it's about. Um, I'm Alicia from mobilitymastery.com and what I'm about to show you is a part of my current routine regarding mercury toxicity and helping my body dump toxins uh, as effectively as possible so that I don't have to recirculate and then detox again. Um, so for those of you that don't know, a couple years ago, I experienced acute mercury toxicity. I'm still kind of dealing with it and actively detoxing at this time. I wasn't really able to do that, you know, immediately after. And um, this isn't my full routine. This isn't everything I'm doing. This is a part of it, but I wanted to show you what it actually looks like. Now, there are other videos on this channel that talk about, where I talk about lymph drainage um, or self lymph massage. And this is gonna look a lot like that. However, there are a few differences here, or things that I didn't talk about then that I wanna talk about now, which is why I'm filming this video for you. So if you're really interested in using fascia release and you know, kind of manual therapies to assist and um, yourself in detoxing and actually detox faster, um, I encourage you to watch any of my other videos, as many of them as you can, on toxicity and fascia release, lymph, the lymph system, um, and maybe some of my fashionista videos, if you're really in the, in the detox mode, that's where you actually would follow along in my healing journey and you can kind of see what it is I've been doing. Uh, but for the purposes of this video, I don't, what I wanna talk about in particular is helping the brain drain. <laughs> uh, so there's a lot of fascia in the brain. There's also a lot of fat in the brain. It's a really fatty organ, right? And neurotoxins such as mercury, but not exclusively mercury, other neurotoxins as well, uh, can accumulate in the brain. Um, and you know, it is a place your body will store it if it has to, uh, if it's not getting stored other places or for whatever reason, it's, you know, crossing that blood brain barrier and getting into your brain. Um, so you definitely want to open your physical, uh, detox pathways as best you can to assist your brain to have open channels to dump those toxins into. And, I, again, encourage you to go watch my other videos on how to open your entire um, superficial fascia and lymph system systemically, um, because I would want you to, you know, be opening up your gut with self abdominal fascia release uh, to improve um, blood circulation and, and detoxability in the gut, including like your liver and your intestines, um, as well as, you know, moving from the bottom of your, you know, your feet essentially, or your calves um, and ankles all the way up your body and really opening up those pathways. But this video is showing you what I've been doing um, specifically for my brain. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna show you right now. And um, a couple things I need to stress before walking you through this technique that I'm using um, or series of, of techniques uh, is make sure you've done enough research on your own, you know, if you're attempting to detox on your own, like I am, um, that you feel pretty confident that you, what you're doing is working and you're at the point in your detox where you, your brain needs to drain because, uh, I, you know, I think it is important to kind of open up other channels first to get your body dumping toxins effectively before you start pulling it out of the brain. Now, this isn't my area of expertise. All I know is what works for me. So I have no idea what would work for you in that regard. Um, if you're interested in my journey, again, you can watch those Fashionista videos, um, that series, hashtag Fashionista. Um, if you search for that on YouTube, you'll find them. Uh, but I think it's important to include some kind of supplementation or assist, you know, that you can use, uh, internally to help your body bind to the toxins you're releasing from your brain. So they get pushed out of your body, eliminated, not recirculated. Um, what I am currently using, uh, in this very moment, it has been changing. Um, but what I started with was, uh, two supplements only, uh, liquid liposomal glutathione in the morning, and then bind a supplement called bind by systemic formulas. We will link to both of those below this video for you. Uh, and 
you know, either two in the afternoon with my meal and then two in the evening or four at night. It's kind of depending on what I remember to do on a given day or how I feel. Uh, that's what started all of this about two months before filming this video right now. Um, I, you know, and then I did a whole body fascia release, uh, session and that started dumping things, um, more systemically. I had been working on primarily opening my gut the last year or so. In addition to some of the other like subclavian ducts that I have videos on that. If you want to search, um, detox and lymph drainage, uh, and at this point, with my brain draining, like it did it on its own. So now I'm like, okay, brain, I'm gonna assist you, right? Uh, so I've been taking alpha lipoic acid, which is supposed to help in particular get mercury out of the brain um, and uh, a few other supplements with just some good um, vitamins and minerals to assist in detox and support the liver. Uh, and kidneys, but that's about it. And then I'm continuing to take the glutathione um, and bind. Uh, so with that said, you're gonna have to figure out what your supplementation looks like for you. Um, but I wanna show you how to help your brain drain once it starts to, um, or if you wanna kind of encourage it to. So if you have any tenderness at all from like back here behind your ear, into your occipital region, into kind of like the back of your head, back here, um, all the way around almost to like your ears. If your inner ears feel full, if you're getting any kind of like puffiness here, um, if your jawline is tender at all, that's all an indication to me. Your brain wants to dump toxicity and perhaps it's not moving through uh, so this is what you're going to use, um, to do that. Now, I just want to say that I'm about to show you an off the cuff, completely unscripted thing that I do. Um, I haven't planned it, uh, ahead of this video other than like, I know what I've been doing intuitively the last week or two, um, or a few weeks, and it may look different for you. I just want to give you options. So, um, instinctively I've been going to when this was really tender, um, using both of my hands, getting my, my fingers back in there and kind of like pressing in, this is not massage, um, pressing in and then gently kind of moving my head around from side to side, up and down. And when you go up, make sure you go back too. And then maybe when you're back there, side to side, maybe drawing a circle. The point here though, is to give the, give, um, that tissue, that superficial fascia and lymph system, some compression and movement. This is not supposed to release deeper fascia in the musculature. This is not meant to, um, be massage. Like we're really trying to assist that superficial fascia to move the lymph. Um, so, so options here, not just back here, but everywhere, compression and movement. So, uh, compressing that occiput region, right? You could just focus on one side. The great thing about this is all you need is your hands. Um, you can definitely use other tools and fascia release techniques that I have on this website and, um, YouTube channel, like the scalings and, uh, you know, with the peanuts or using a softball to get into your neck, but I've just been using my hands. So that's what I'm going to show you. Um, so you want to get into like the entire line, you know, traveling down. If you want to first just feel, maybe just feel. I like doing a kind of a, you know, a little creeping, I don't know, palpating two fingers basically, but each side um, and just kind of feel around the back of my ear to my jawline. Like, oh, okay. Like that's really tender right now on me. <laughs> um, so that's actually a spot I haven't found yet. Um, so if I were to think about doing that right now on camera, I would just, I'm probably going to do one side at a time since there's a lot of sensation there and just give some good compression and just some slow movement. And then I'm going to do this. I'm going to start at the site of where that tenderness was and pull. 
So I'm going to pull it down. I'm, I'm giving quite a bit of compression here, but I'm not poking in. So it's the flats of my fingers. And I like to just continuously kind of pull on it like that. And then I might try tilting my head some different angles. Um, and then I'll check it again, still tender. And sometimes it, you know, it doesn't disappear immediately. Um, this is working really well, just kind of like compressing. I could open my jaw. So there's a lot of options here, um, but you're really going to use either some compression where you hold your fingers kind of in place and then move your head or um, this kind of pulling, draining, draw it, pulling it down, like encouraging it to drain. So I like to use a combination of both of those. Um, another thing that I love to do is take my right hand for my left side and my left hand would go maybe on my right. Um, and oh, yeah, like that clunked right there. So it's just, I'm compressing, I'm moving, and then I'm going to do some of this to follow it. Remember, the purpose of this isn't to get out of pain. We're not releasing fascia for the purpose of like getting into that deep muscle stuff. This is all about the superficial fascia and the lymph and, and moving it and draining it, right? So the other thing that I've really been doing is paying attention to these lymph nodes under my jaw. So um, that the jawline is going to be an area that when your brain starts dumping maybe into your sinuses, um, or into your kind of your your ear region, your mouth, your I don't know, like you might you might even do some face length movement, right? Just like kind of pulling it down. <laughs> I have no idea what I look like here on camera. Um, but then once you get to the jawline, this is a great place to do this. Um, and I've been like, ooh, so I'll like that's still tender on me. So this is something I've been working working on for the last few days. And it seems to jump around. So right now, there's one lymph node in particular that's super tender um, on the right side. Left side, I hardly feel anything. A week ago, well, it was all the left side. And the right side, I didn't feel anything. So it's going to jump around like this. So as you're detoxing, uh, definitely keep checking. Don't assume just because you know the left side was good um, last week that it will be this week. It could change. So with this jawline stuff, I really like tilting my head up. It basically, it stretches everything and then exposes it all uh, for you to get in there or for me to get in there. Um, so I like tilting it up and like really getting into that tender node and like, and then pulling. It's funny looking, huh? It probably doesn't even look like I'm doing much, to be honest, but there's a lot of sensation here. There's a lot of tenderness right there. So I might just like stay on that one little spot. Maybe, nope, that doesn't do anything. It's really that draining motion that does it. Um, this is another one I will do, like using both fingers. And then definitely like just kind of going over the whole neck. If I find anything that's like tender, like right there is a little, then I might do some of that again. But the important thing that I really want to stress in this video, because I have that other lymph drainage video, um, I, I've talked about, you know, the subclavian ducts and we've talked, you know, I've shown you guys how to do in other, in these other videos, how to do um, like a stretch for the subclavius and that duct, right? So that would be one I would want to add to this. But right now I'm talking about like that brain drain. But the thing that I haven't been doing until now is getting into the back of my neck. And there's actually a lot of fascial nodes um, and, and fat, you know, or excuse me, lymph nodes 
um, in that fascia back there and lymph vessels that drain from the back of the head. Uh, and so it's really important to, to get in there. Um, so don't just uh, do one part of it. So I kind of turned and was like showing you this, um, but I kind of want to turn around and show you what I'm doing on the back of my head as well. All right, so I just wanted you to see what I'm talking about here. So we've got right behind the ear, um, which is heading towards the back of the neck right here. But I think it's really important to also get into and feel this stuff. So this all the way down next to that cervical spine. Um, so you can get into it pretty well with your fingers. Just this is how I would do it. I'm grabbing some of the ropes that I feel and like I might kind of twang over them like I'm just doing right now, but I'm allowing it my head movement to be the thing that actually like crunches it. <laughs> um, and I know that's probably not super visible on camera, um, but then this is also really good. Just kind of making your way down. Um, another thing is I'll do this. Like I'll actually use my shoulders and kind of whew, like that actually feels so good. <laughs> um, I forgot about that until just now. I was like, oh yeah. So you can actually use your own shoulders to kind of compress that um, entire back of your neck. And <laughs> I just have to say that, um, you know, this is not a, a, a like a strategic process where I'm going to give you a, a routine that's going to work for you. Um, this is about offering you options um, and figuring out from those options what works for you. Uh, so it, you, don't, you know, these are all the options you have with just your hands. The reason I wanted to show you this video just with my hands is because there's so much you can do. You don't necessarily need to go see someone and pay someone to do this for you here. Um, you know, you could, it doesn't mean like, that's great. If you have someone you can go to great. Uh, but this is something I've been doing daily. So, um, you know, over morning coffee, you know, while I'm just kind of sitting there or at night sometimes, or whenever I have a moment and I feel, feel this, I will pay attention and kind of get in there. Um, so just to kind of recap here for you, um, you got these two fingers, which are my favorite for palpating up here in the neck. You could use all, you could use these three. That certainly works as well. Um, and then you can use those three or two fingers to compress and move. And then again, just keep in mind, like we want to drain. And then it's not about um, necessarily compression and shearing, which I'm always trying to do, right? You could, you could, if you end up like compressing and shearing some fascia with just your fingers, awesome. But really we're trying to move that superficial fascia. And that superficial fascia is typically not crazy, um, ropey, dense. Uh, it's going to be, if you feel ropiness or density in there, um, I'm not saying it's not there. It's just in the musculature. So it's below that superficial level. Um, if you're feeling that ropiness and what we're mostly concerned with here, mostly not hundred percent, but mostly is that superficial fascia, the lymph system and moving it. Um, I have heard from other um, professionals out there, detox experts that supposedly there are only two ways to move lymph, diaphragmatic breathing and movement. Uh, I don't know whether the people saying that would claim that fascia release is movement, but what they're usually talking about is, um, moving your body. So exercise of some kind, hiking or jumping up and down, jumping on a rebounder. Um, I disagree. I think that we can actually manually move lymph as well. And sometimes we really need to because those physical pathways are not open. Um, meaning there's so much fascial restriction or so much lymph accumulation on the physical level that needs to get 
pushed out um, quite physically that uh, we may need to get in there and open those pathways up, um, right? Open that fascial system up and actually get the channels open so whatever is in that lymph system can actually move out. So um, this certainly wasn't a complete video. I, did, I probably didn't show you everything I do um, because it's not, it's always based on what I feel in the moment. Uh, but where you really want to pay attention is from the back of your head and, and around to the back of your ears and down and all the way down your neck in the back and then all the way down the sides of your neck, right? And those SEMs and then under your jawline, you want to get up into that jaw, you know, and like I, you watched me in this video, find something I hadn't found before. <laughs> That's because you could be a quarter of an inch away or an eighth of, a, of an inch away and actually not feel that tenderness. So um, when you're palpating, make sure you're really hunting it all out. Um, that jawline is going to be super important again, right? And then if you really want to add it, you could get into these si the sinuses here and help that drain if that feels important to you. Um, if you're getting sinus drainage um, or you notice your eyes really being puffy, that's something that's been there for me um, on and off. I'm getting better finally, but today while I'm actually filming this video, I noticed I woke up today a little bit puffy again. Um, so I think my brain is draining again. It was puffy here and then I felt like my inner ear had some clogging. So it's partly why I wanted to film this video for you. Um, again, you can use one hand on one side, movement, these movements, right? Um, and ooh, that's tender. <laughs> There's so much here. Um, and just because it's tender doesn't necessarily mean it's the superficial fascia and lymph, but there's a good chance it is. Um, that word tender tends to uh, show up with lymph and toxicity. So um, there you go. That's my hands only, no tool required brain drain uh, technique for this whole area. And then just make sure you're supplementing in a way that you know is going to bind to those toxins and help you move it out of your body. And, um, make sure you've opened up the other pathways as well. Um, if I had to add just a couple to this for you, um, to make sure it's draining all the way out from your brain in particular, it would be the subclavian ducts here. Um, look up my lymph drainage video. Uh, and then the abdomen. If you open up this, all of this, this right here, and this, you have a very good chance of moving whatever is in your brain out of your body and not having it recirculate. Uh, so that's what I would focus on if draining your brain is your priority here, if that's why you're watching this video. So I hope this was useful for you. Definitely let me know if you try it in the comments below and what your experience is. Every single comment that you share, I know inspires someone else or they get to learn by reading of your experience. And, um, you know, this, some of this stuff can feel scary to do on our own. So the more we share our experiences, the more likely it is other people will do the same. Uh, so thank you for sharing your comments below this video. I hope this was useful and uh, I will see you next time.